Good morning, everyone. It's very good to see all of you here this morning, especially our guests and our visitors. We're very blessed that you could be with us today and hope you're blessed by your time with us this morning. Uh, today, uh, middle of summer, it's uh, what, July 11th. Hope everybody's making it through all right. It's good to see everyone here. Uh, our sermon today is going to be on Mark chapter 6. And it's about the beheading of John the Baptist. It's actually about King Herod and how he's dealing with his memory of doing that. So uh, we're going to sing some of the John the Baptist songs. We're going to talk about how Jesus heals our memories and how he helps us deal with things from the past. So um, and we'll talk about that. Dwayne, you've got something you want to share with people? Just wanted to let everybody know that after the service, we're going to talk about ushers. We're going to ask, I'm asking for anybody who wants to usher to stay after a little bit and we'll try to get together a schedule for people. If we get more people, we get the less time you have to do it. Uh, right now, there's just we just need two per service, but uh, could come to the point where we pass the plate and then we will need four people. But if you're interested, it's going to be right after church. I will be in here to talk to you about it. Thank you. So Dwayne is going to take over scheduling and training the ushers and the acolytes and that kind of thing. So, um, which is Dwayne. To Dwayne. I'm sorry? Dwayne? Dwayne Danner to Dwayne Bargman. Oh, Dwayne Danner used to do it, right. This is Dwayne Bargman, so thank you. Yes, different Dwayne is <laughs> taking it over. So um, ushers are actually the, uh, the greeters, the guests. The, uh, um, before, I, I, before I was a pastor, I always liked being the usher. You always sit in the back, but anyway. So uh, the ushers make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. They make people feel safe. They make people feel welcome. It's a really good job. Men, women can do it, so families can do it together. So if you'd like to serve in that way and make people feel welcome and make sure the service help run the service smoothly, pass out the bulletins, take the offerings, uh, talk to Dwayne, and he'll get you all fixed up. So as I said, men, women, any age, teenagers are welcome. Uh, to do that too. So, something else I wanted to tell you today. Today is July 11th, right? So, Jan, would you stand up, please? Yeah. So, you wouldn't know what to, to look at it, but this young lady has a birthday today, and 90 years ago, the world was graced. So let's sing happy birthday to Jan. I know we usually sing on the first Sunday of the month, but anytime you turn 90, we'll sing. <laughs> and actually, Jan, is, Jan actually is not our oldest member, by the way. So she's still got some at uh, Shirley, nicely, I think is a few years ahead of you. So uh, still catching up. Um, very good, very nice. Our service today, we join our hearts and our voices using the liturgy on page 167. Yeah, same one we've been using. So it'll be up on the screen. And um, yeah, there you go, John the Baptist songs. So it'll be up on the screen. It'll also be in the hymnal. And um, 
We put away the worries of last week, put away the fears of what's to come. And basically, we came today to be present in this moment to focus on God and the good things he has for us, uh, his word, his encouragement, his forgiveness. So may you be richly blessed in your worship of him today. We'll begin with the first song. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have peace with God through this wonderful forgiveness. We should have peace with each other. Share that peace with those around you.
Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. Enter not into judgment with your servant. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. You gave your prophets strength to resist the temptations of the devil and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your Son faithfully, even into suffering and death. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The 
New Testament reading comes from Amos chapter 7, starting with the seventh verse. This is what the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with the plumb line, the plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line. In the midst of my people Israel, I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words, for thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword. And Israel must go into exile, away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. The Lord took me from following the flock and herdsmen and addressed a flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from Ephesians chapter 1, starting with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even as he has chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, Will, so that we who were first to hope in him in Christ might be to the praise of the glory in him. You also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it in the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. Mark 6, chapter, verse 14 to 29. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become now. Some say, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. This is why these miracle powers are are working in him. But others said, he is Elisha. And others said, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of the old. But when he heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was he who had sent and sent John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John has been saying to Hero, it is not rightful for you to have your brother's wife. 
And Herodias had a grudge against him and gained it to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was readily perplexed, and yet he heard him let gladly. Sorry. But in an opportunity, came when he wrote from his birthday gay a banquet for his noble and military commander and the leading man of Galilee. For when Herodias daughter came in, in and danced, she pleased her hero and his guests. And the king said to the girls, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he opened to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me that once the head of John the Baptist on the plate. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oath and his guest, and did not want to pray his word to her. And immediately, the king said, and executed with orders to bring John heads. And when, and when, and behind him in the prison, in brown he in head and plated, and gave it to the girls, and the girls gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard it, they came and took in his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of our Lord.
like to ask the kids to come down front for a minute. Good to see everyone this morning. I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes and imagine that you're sitting outside on a nice warm July evening. Not too hard to do these days. Um, what are some of the things you'd hear if you're sitting outside on a nice warm evening? Yeah, birds? Okay, what else are some of the things you might hear? What's that? Cars, yeah. Can't, can't get away from that in Phoenix. Anything else you might hear? The wind, yeah, especially last night. So um, the wind, the cars, the birds, anything else you might hear? And yeah, maybe a TV going off somewhere where the neighbor's watching a basketball game or something or something like that. So I've got some stuff here. Everybody know what this is? It's a radio. Yeah. What do you do with the radio? What do you what do you what do you listen to on radios? Music, or maybe news or sports or something else. Everybody know what this is? The CD. It's actually one of Pastor Ramon's CDs. You didn't know he had CDs, did you? Um, what do you what do you what what do you listen to on a CD? Music, yeah, usually some music, yeah. This is, um, yeah, this is one of the, yeah, there's good music on this CD. How about this? You know what this is? Oh, we know what this is, yeah. It's a uh, cell phone. What do you listen to on this? Music on your phone? Sure, sure. Anything else? Netflix? Yeah, watch movies on your phone? Sure. <laughs> How's that? YouTube's, yeah, yeah, huh? Hulu, yeah, Hulu, YouTube, sure. Do you ever listen to other people, like make phone call, that kind of thing? Oh, it was just telling me somebody's birthday today. So um, all kind of things. When you're sitting outside, you hear things, right? When you use one of these devices, you listen to things. What's the difference between hearing something and listening to something? One of them you take note of. When you hear things, it's just sounds going in your ear. When you listen, it means you take a judgment and you take some action and you have to engage with what's, what comes into your ear. You know, the first reading that Daisy read today was uh, uh, King Amaziah and uh, he didn't want to listen to the prophet Amos. And then the second, uh, the gospel reading that Pastor Ramon read, you had another King Herod who didn't want to listen to John the Baptist. You know, they would hear the sounds going in their ears, but they didn't want to do anything about it. You know, that's one of the dangers. It's one of the dangers. Uh, we hear God's word and it goes into our ears, but if we don't do anything about it, we're really not listening. So God has blessed you and blessed all of us by giving us his word. So whenever you come to like Sunday school or children's messages or vacation Bible school or any other time you hear God's word, it's the Holy Spirit coming to you to build you up, to strengthen your faith, to encourage you, to help you through life and to help you learn things and to uh, help you deal with life. So whenever God's word comes to you, wherever you find it, don't just hear it, what do you think you should do? Listen. That's, that's a great hymn. You know, listen, God is calling in his word. Yeah. Let's go ahead and pray. Father in heaven, many voices fill the world. Help us to listen to your voice. so that we get to know you better. And in the end, we'll spend eternity with you. In 
Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thank you. May the grace and may the mercy and may the peace of our good God and Savior Jesus be with you now and all the days of your life. Memory is powerful. Memory is very powerful. You can smell the aroma of something cooking and instantly you're back in your childhood kitchen with all the nice aromas and smells and feelings that go with it. You can see a certain building or, or a certain car and it might transport you back to a horrible day that you don't want to repeat. You can listen to a song. You can listen to a song come on the radio and instantly you're 17 again, back wherever you went to high school. Memory is powerful. Today we hear about uh, basically King Herod, who uh, really wasn't a king, but we'll get to that. He's plagued by a memory. He's plagued by a memory of his extraordinary sin. See, what had been going on is the first verses beyond before our uh, gospel reading today is that Jesus had been going through the countryside healing people and raising people and teaching people and uh, doing miracles and it was getting notice it was getting notice and King Herod was hearing it getting notice and he was thinking "Uh oh what's going on here this is something extraordinary what's happening oh I know it's John the Baptist raised from the dead I mean he was wrong about that but that's what he thought John the Baptist raised from the dead. I remember when I killed John. See, Herod was a man who took delight in the extraordinary. He liked listening to John the Baptist. Uh, he liked uh, this prophet, this uh, pro person from the past who had visions of the future. And by the way, this Herod was not the one who killed all the babies in Bethlehem. This Herod is his son. But the apple didn't fall far from that proverbial tree. You see, this Herod had ambitions for being king, but he never received that title. Technically, he was a tetrarch, which is a Roman term for one who rules a quarter or a fourth. It was less than a king. So when he promised to give up to half his kingdom to his stepdaughter, he didn't even have the power because he didn't have a kingdom. He couldn't even fulfill that promise. This is a man who delighted in the extreme and the extraordinary. This is a man who is celebrating his birthday, so he decides to throw a banquet, a drunken banquet for his birthday. Invites his generals, invites his leaders, invites the political people, and just has a big drunken uh, party for his birthday. Then he had his daughter, his stepdaughter, dancing publicly before the guests. And then he made a promise that he could never keep. He wasn't really a king, so he didn't really have a kingdom they could give. You see, Herod made extraordinary promises, loved the extraordinary. And because of his promise, he had John the Baptist beheaded and delivered the head to the young girl on a platter. He delighted in the, in the extraordinary, his pleasure, his ambition, his promises. But his dedication to the extraordinary really filled his life with sorrow. Because when the extraordinary did happen in his kingdom, when miracles started coming and the messianic age was breaking forth and the long-promised savior of the world was here, he was filled with sorrow. Your demons were being cast out, people were being healed, but his memory was haunted by the troubling spirit of his extraordinary sin. Now, Herod is an easy figure for us to despise and look down on. I mean, just from what we know, he's well known from history, from secular history. He stole his brother's wife. His, he divorced his own wife of long standing, then seduced his brother's wife. She divorced his brother, and then they got married. It's no wonder she was sensitive about it. And then he has this drunken banquet to celebrate his birthday, has his own, stepdaughter his own stepdaughter dance, and she was probably 16, 17, dance in front of this drunken crowd. And then you can get an in insight into this family. When she asks her mother what should she ask for a reward, her mother says, kill someone, give me the head. 
I mean, that's pretty grisly. We could have used all sorts of medieval art up here, by the way, but we thought that wouldn't be so great for a Sunday morning. It's easy. I mean, just to impress his guests, just to not look bad in front of his drunken co-workers and compatriots, he goes ahead and kills John just to fulfill. I mean, it's e just to fulfill that drunken promise. It's easy to despise someone like that. I mean, he is just a train wreck all over the place, and his sin is so extraordinary. It makes our sins look minor by comparison. It makes our sins look like, oh, that's nothing here. Hold my beer, let me show you what real sin is. But, you know, God's, God's judgment and God's word is very clear. All sin will get you to hell. It's, it's not a matter of degree, it's a matter of quality. Sin is sin, rebellion against God. Even our sins are attempts to silence God's word. I mean, we may not live in great palaces. We may not give banquets for our birthdays. We may uh, not make outlandish promises. But we, too, can be troubled by the memories of our sin. I mean, sin has a way of wheedling its way in, of, of coming into the most humble home. It has the way of wheeling into the most holy environment. It has the way of turning the most peaceful place into a, a palace of torment. I mean, we can suffer. I mean, we may not suffer because we remember the time we beheaded a prophet, but we do remember that one sin, that sin that impinks our life. You see, every sin is an attempt to silence God's word. It's like, I don't want to listen, Lord. I know what you said, but I'm going to do what I want to do. It started with Adam and Eve and his run all the way through human history down to us today. I mean, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, anger with our neighbor is violating you shall not murder. Maybe a, a lustful glance uh, is a sin against God's command not to commit adultery. I mean, we might come to church on Sunday and listen to God's word with pleasure, but then we don't put it into action. We hear it, but we don't listen. Um, hmm. When we don't live according to God's word, we silence the prophets. And sin like that makes for a troubled place. It makes for a troubled home, makes for a troubled world. And our sins can haunt the halls of our memory as we recall that one particular sin that we burden that burdens us and that we live with. Maybe that uh, one moment of weakness. Maybe it's that word we wish we could take back. Maybe it's that decision that in hindsight looks totally foolish and wrong. Maybe it's that one day we lost our temper. Maybe it's that, well, you fill in the blank with their own sin that bothers you. Hmm. In front of God, all sin is black. In, in front of God, all sin will get you to hell. It's not a measure of uh, how extravagant or extraordinary it is. But we don't despair. <clears throat> we don't despair because today in the Gospel of Mark, we have a glimpse of an even more extraordinary event than the things that uh, Herod was doing. <clears throat> Herod reflect back on his episode with John the Baptist because he heard what Jesus was doing. He heard about the casting out of demons. He heard about the healings. He heard about the teachings that were going on. He heard about the great crowds that were coming to heal, hear Jesus. And we know that Jesus came all around. Jesus came to forgive sins. So around this horrible episode of John the Baptist, the last prophet, the forerunner of Jesus, who even predicted Jesus' death by his grisly death at the hands of a king. He surrounds this story of John with great love. You see, Jesus <clears throat> had sent his disciples out to proclaim the God's word, to proclaim forgiveness, to proclaim release, to proclaim healing and hope. As Herod was transfixed by his memories and his troubles and his sin, the word of forgiveness was going out all around him. The word of God's forgiveness and healing was going out all around him. You see, the word of Jesus was transforming the world with his extravagant love. That's what Jesus does. 
He comes into the troubled places of our world. He challenges us with a call to repentance. He changes us with the good news of our salvation, and he transforms us by his life and his death and his resurrection. He changes us from people transfixed and burdened by our sins to people who remember God's mercy, who rejoice in God's love, who share the good news of how great this God is for us. Jesus comes into the worst parts of our lives and brings healing, brings forgiveness, brings wholeness, and brings life. <clears throat> See, even though Herod missed this extraordinary work of God, we don't miss it. We have seen what happens. We know God's word. We hear it, and we listen to it. I mean, regardless of what sin you may come bearing and being burdened by today, we hear the wonderful word of God's life-changing love. You hear the word, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's what Jesus is continuing to do today through his word, through his sacraments, through his scriptures, <clears throat> through his servants. He calls us to repent, to turn away from our sins, to admit that we were wrong, to turn away and then to receive his forgiveness. Excuse me. You see, this day we stand in the place of forgiveness. This day we stand in the place where we come to be relieved of our past. We repent of our sins. We turn to God and receive his life, his wholeness, his healing, his hope, and his future. Because no sin can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus continues that ministry today. All sin will get you to hell, no matter what it is, even the sins we're not aware of. But Jesus came to forgive all sins. Jesus came to give his life into our lives so that we're no longer troubled by the memories of our sins. Oh, learn from them. Learn not to repeat them. Turn from them, but not be afraid of them, not be burdened by them, not be worried by them because <clears throat> Jesus carried the punishment for God's wrath. Jesus died and rose again and brings us new life. Hmm. Why was Herod afraid? Because he thought, I killed John. I thought that was the end of it. He kept bringing it up about my wife and I, and I killed John. That's the end of it. But maybe not. He thought Jesus was come back to get revenge. I mean, he was very wrong about that. But he was still afraid because of his sin. We don't have to live in fear of God. We don't have to live in fear of his judgment. We don't have to live wondering, have I done enough? Have I done it good enough? Have I done it well enough? We don't have to live that way because we can turn from our sin, turn to God, say, Lord, forgive me for those things I know, for those things I don't know. Forgive me, heal me, use me, send me. <clears throat> That's God's love. He sent Jesus for our salvation. Jesus who willingly put his life in our place, who willingly bear our burdens, and who willingly calls us today as his children, as his brothers and sisters, who says, I know you. I know what you're dealing with. I know where you've come from. I know what plagues you. And I love you. And you are mine. And regardless of what it is you're dealing with, you still have a place with me. And you are still my beloved child. See, the memory that we really treasure is the memory of our sins being forgiven. The memories that we really cherish are the memories of the burden being lifted and that wonderful feeling of having unconditional love and peace from God. That's a memory we will never forget. See, Jesus enters the, the troubled places in our lives. Jesus transforms them with his love. He transforms them with his life-giving word. He makes us different and he changes us so that we're not who we were, worried and fearful and burdened and oppressed but we are freed, we are strengthened, we are sent out with joy to share with others the wonderful work that Jesus has done, 
and is doing today. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Will you please stay? <clears throat> Will you please stand? At our last elders meeting, we um, talked about uh, continuing to pass the plate. For now, we're going to still collect our offerings in the box and back. Uh, please give online, too. Um, I want to share with everybody that in the last six months, our offerings are doing better. They're going in the right direction. We're not where we need to be by any means, but things are looking better. So I want to thank everybody who's been faithful in giving their offerings. As I've said many times, please be intentional. Don't just give what's in your pocket on any given Sunday, but figure it out just like you have to budget for any, any other um, expense or need in your life. So thank you for being faithful. Thank you for... Um, adopting the online practices or the automatic bill paying. As I've said, when our church knows what it can reasonably expect to have, we can plan to do God's work better. So thank you for giving back to God what he's first given to you. Um, things are looking better, but we're not out of the woods yet, so uh, our leadership is still dealing with it. So let's say together now what we all believe together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Christian Church, in the communion of saints, in the forgiveness of sins, in the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for giving us this day under your care and your grace another day where we can rise and be about your business and enjoy the many blessings you give us. Some of the blessings are great big, Lord, and we see them easily. Many other blessings are small and we take them for granted. Open our eyes to see all of your goodness to us, Lord, and open our hearts and voices to give you thanks and praise for another day in your service, another day under your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, please watch over all of those who are traveling, whether they're flying through the air or driving on the highways. Watch over them and keep them safe, especially for our loved ones, Lord. Let your angels go in front of them and behind them and all around them as they travel. Please keep them safe as they return, until they return to those who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, thank you for the many ways we can be about your business and serving you. Thank you for letting us be part of the ministry of Camp Aloma. Uh, this day, another group of kids will gather. This day, another group of counselors will come. We ask, Lord, that you continue to pour your spirit upon the camp and its staff so that the time spent there is a time where kids and counselors get to know you better where they grow in their knowledge of you, where they are refreshed by being in the outdoors. Thank you for this ministry, Lord. Bless it, use it, and we thank you for letting us be a part of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, thank you for letting us reach out to others in this community. Uh, this next, on the 19th, will be our vacation Bible school, Lord. We ask that you would stir up the families around here, that you would lead them to bring their children uh, so they can hear the wonderful news that we have to share with them. Please stir up those in our neighborhood, Lord, and bring 
bring them to our Vacation Bible School and make us ready to receive them, to share with them in love the wonderful message you have given us to give to all people. Bless our teachers, bless the people running the games and the music in the kitchen. And again, Lord, we ask that you would bring people from this community to hear your good word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, life is not easy in this sinful and broken world. The unexpected happens, but we know you are good and we can depend on you. We ask, Lord, that you would heal those among us who have a sickness, a sickness of the body or a sickness of the mind or a sickness of the spirit. We ask for your healing and your wholeness and your life. Especially we ask that you would be with Joanne Bissey and Oscar Obbs and Vicki Liebert, Marlene Heinrich, and be with Mike's mom, Joanne. And Lord, our many loved ones who are struggling, they are known to us and known to you. Please heal them. Please make them whole. Lord, take away the fears of those who are suffering and let us be the caring Christian family they need in this time of trouble. Bring them wholeness and restore them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, as we look through our life, help us turn from those ways we know are not helpful or good. Help us turn from those sins that draw us away from you or bring pain and sorrow into our lives. Give us your Holy Spirit so we can turn from these things and remain faithful in following you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, there are too many things in the world to ask for and too much to pray about, but we ask you for all of these things, and we ask for whatever other good things you want us to ask for. We ask for them all in the most holy and precious name of our Lord Jesus, the same Jesus who invites us to call you Father and pray together the prayer he has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So remember, if you want to serve the rest of the church by being an usher or an acolyte, talk to Duane. We only have one week left. If you have kids in your neighborhood, pick up a VBS invitation in the back. They can scan the QR code and register online. So uh, that's those two reminders. And we'll close with our closing song. <laughs>